Probably the most common question I receive through the Ancient Hebrew Research Center is how do you pronounce the Hebrew name yod heh vav -Heh, or yod heh wah -Heh? There are many theories out there including Jehovah, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahuwah, Yehovah, and there are many others. The greatest problem is, and I mean no disrespect to anyone, that those who are coming up with these pronunciations do not know Hebrew. Hebrew, like all other languages, follow rules. Rules of pronunciation and rules of grammar. In order to go into the details about how the yod he wah -He should be pronounced, we will need to get into some of these rules. The syllables of a word or name are broken up in specific ways, just as our English does. There are two kinds of syllables, open and closed. An open syllable is a consonant and vowel, and a closed syllable is a consonant, vowel, consonant. The word he is an open syllable, but her is a closed syllable. For a two-syllable word, English will usually place a closed syllable at the beginning of a word whenever possible, and an open syllable at the end of a word. So when we say this Hebrew word in English, we usually say Torah. But in Hebrew, the closed syllable comes at the end, so in Hebrew this is pronounced Torah. A Hebrew word with three letters, and keep in mind that most vowels are not written in Hebrew, but are simply implied, will usually be broken up as consonant vowel and consonant vowel consonant where the V will oftentimes represent an implied vowel. An example of this is this Hebrew word which is pronounced ha lach meaning walk. A Hebrew word with four letters will usually be broken up in two ways. The first is consonant vowel consonant and consonant vowel consonant. An example of this is this word, which is mid bar, meaning desert. The second way is consonant vowel, consonant vowel, consonant vowel, consonant. An example of this would be this word, which is be de rech, be de rech, meaning in the road. The Hebrew letters yud and wa or vav if you follow the modern pronunciation of this letter, may act as a vowel or a consonant, much like our letter Y, which could be a consonant like in the word yellow, or a vowel like in the word fly. Depending on where the yud or the wa is located in relation to the syllables will determine if it is going to be used as a vowel or a consonant. If the yud or wa is at the beginning of a syllable, it will take the consonant sound, but if it's in the middle or end of a syllable, it will be a vowel. Here are some examples. Molt is the word for death. Notice that the wa is in the middle of the consonant, so it's a vowel. Torah, meaning teachings, or sometimes translated as law, has the wa at the end of a syllable, so it is a vowel. Mitzvot, meaning commandment, here the wa is at the beginning of a syllable, so it is a consonant. Din is the word for judge. The yod is in the middle of the syllable, so it is a vowel. Yawan, this is the Hebrew word for the land of Greece. Both the yud and the wa are consonants because they are both at the beginning of a syllable. Yado, this means his hand. The yod is a consonant because it is at the beginning of a syllable, and the wa is a vowel because it is at the end of a syllable. At this point, it will be helpful to address a very common misconception when it comes to the name yod heh wah -Heh, in relation to the name Yehuda, which is Judah. 
Many have noticed that the Hebrew letters in the yod heh -Oh are identical to the name Yehuda, with the exception of the letter Dalet, the D. Notice how the name Yehuda follows the rules of pronunciation. The wa is at the end of a syllable, so it is a vowel, and the word ends with a closed syllable. But when you remove the D, everything changes. Now we have three open syllables and no closed syllables. To correct this, the wa must be shifted from being at the end of the middle syllable to being at the beginning of the last syllable. And since the wa is now at the beginning of a syllable, it must take the consonantal sound wa. Now we have a consonant without a vowel in the middle, so the h must shift to the end of the first syllable. Now I'm not saying that yewa is the pronunciation because there is still more to understanding how Hebrew names work. I am simply pointing out how the name cannot be Yehua. All Hebrew names are Hebrew words. For instance, the name Adam is also a Hebrew word meaning man. The name Noah means comfort and the name Chawa or Eve means living. These examples are Hebrew names that are also Hebrew nouns, but some names may be a verb. The name Yaakov is Yaakov. Note here that the Yud is at the beginning of a syllable and is a consonant, and the Wa is in the middle of a syllable and is therefore a vowel. This is a verb meaning he grabs the heel. Some names can be a multiple of verbs and or nouns. The name Yishmael or Ishmael is the verb Yishma. The Yi at the beginning of a verb means he, and the verb Shma means hears, so this means he hears. The L at the end of the name is a noun meaning mighty one or God. Putting the verb and the noun together we have God hears. Now that we have learned a little bit about the rules of pronunciation and grammar, let's put it all together and see how it all applies to the name yod -Heh -Wah -Heh. The name yod -Heh -Wah -Heh can be broken down in two ways according to the rules that we looked at earlier. Note here that the V represents a vowel. In both cases, the Yud and the Wa are at the beginning of the syllables. Therefore, they will take consonantal sounds and not vowel sounds. The next thing that must be determined is what noun or verb is the name yod -Heh -Wah -Heh. It can only be one thing, a verb, the verb Hawa, meaning to exist. When a verb has a Yud prefix to it, the yod means he, so yod he wa he means he exists. Now we need to determine the vowels that go in the word. While the verb yod he wa he is never used as a verb in the biblical text, there is a very closely related verb, and that is the verb yod he yod he, which also means he exists. This verb is used many times, but you can see it in Genesis 1.29, and here it is pronounced yihye. If we take those vowels and place them in the yod -Heh -Wah -Heh, we have yihwe. While the positions of the vowels are pretty much defined by the rules of pronunciation, there are exceptions to which vowels are used. Therefore, it is entirely possible that the name yod -Heh -Wah -Heh may have different vowels. And some possible pronunciations are Yehwa, Yahweh, Yihweh, Yehahwa, Yehehoe, Yehowa, and the possibilities are almost endless. Now this is all just an educated guess based on all the facts and the traditions of the Hebrew language that has been passed down through the centuries. It is entirely possible that in ancient times they had a very different set of rules for pronunciation, but we will never know if that is true. 
And if it is true, there is no way to know what those rules were. That is unless, as I often like to say, we find Moses' tape recorder. There is another aspect of the name that should be addressed as I believe it is crucial in understanding the name. In Exodus 9.16, Yehweh, or Yahweh, or whatever name you choose to use, tells Yisrael that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. And many have taken this to mean that we are to teach others how to correctly pronounce the name yod heh The Hebrew word for name is Shem, and is the root of the word Neshema, which means breath. In the ancient Hebrew culture, your breath is more than just the exchange of air in the lungs. It is your character. It is what makes you, you. And as I mentioned previously, all Hebrew names are Hebrew words, and these words reflected the character of that individual. From all of this, we can easily conclude that the Hebrew word Shem means more than just name, it means character. Now, let's take another look at Exodus 9.16 and literally translate it from the Hebrew with the Hebraic philosophy behind it. That my character may be recounted throughout all the earth. This has nothing to do with how the name is pronounced, but more importantly about teaching others about the character of yod heh In Numbers 6, verse 24 to 26, we have the Aaronic Blessing, which I translate as follows from the Hebrew. This blessing is the character of yod heh And what is most profound is that in the next verse, verse 27, we read, And they shall place my name upon the sons of Israel, and I will respect them. Now, read that again, but this time, replace the word name with the word character, and you'll see that this passage will make a whole lot more sense. When we are teaching Yahweh to others, are we placing the importance on the pronunciation of that name, or are we teaching them the character of yod heh The character of yod heh can be summed up with the word unity. When someone insists on a particular pronunciation, even to the point of making it a salvation issue, is that person creating unity or chaos?